Gil Galindo, and for those who don't, that's my name, of course. Um, welcome to my debut classical album release party. Um, I actually never thought something like this would happen, but you know, that's kind of pretty freaking cool. Um, so, like the pieces on this album, I'm going to talk a little bit about the album and the whole pieces. I mean, I moved here in 2006. Uh, straight from the Clement Institute of Music, and before that was in Northwestern, and before that I was in West Texas. Um, and a lot of these pieces, or these pieces kind of encompass almost all of my time here, from the year 2008 until the pandemic shutdown. Um, there were two pieces that I wrote during the pandemic shutdown, which I don't think are on this program. No, the string quartet and the solo violin piece are not. But the earliest piece that I wrote, Lost in the Caves, um, is on this program. But the first piece is going to be a combo piece that was inspired by a jazz combo that I, that I saw at, the, um, uh, the, uh, at a, a cocktail reception, I think for the uh, Music Publishers Association award ceremony. If somebody correct me about the right title for that, I don't remember. So, but anyway, so I thought it was very intriguing that we had saxophone, guitar, uh, bass, and violin all together. And I've always been, uh, uh, I've always found syncopated tunes appealing um, as well. So, and, and in this piece, I also just decided to put a Mexican tune in there, just original one. And there are several other pieces around that time that I did that as well, just kind of incorporate the melodies or the types of melodies that I grew up with in West Texas. Um, and yeah, so the, the, the title of the, 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 the album is Terrestrial Journeys. And that has to do with my understanding of my spiritual life and life on this earth. You know, taking it from, you know, just having fun at a cocktail reception, getting lost in bars, trying to understand God and, you know, what the end result of everything will be. Um, and you'll find all that in the liner notes of Terrestrial Journeys if you're not going to buy a CD, which I hope you can. And even if you don't have a CD player, I would hope you buy a CD because it's just kind of fun to have it, right? Five dollars, come on, it's not bad. You get my signature for ten dollars, I don't know. Um, so there you go. Um, and, uh, or get to do a stream it online or buy it online on Bandcamp. But um, yeah, so at this point, I would like to bring on what I'm calling the Spunk Combo uh, or Spunk Quartet, which they've gotten together just for this, this, this album, this event, uh, to play Spunk. So um, if we uh, like to welcome them on the stage. Thank you. 
That was that was pretty awesome. Thank you guys. I mean, this has been quite quite a, quite something. We recorded the album in October of 2021 in one day, 12 hour day, um, and we got it done. So, and these guys have been fantastic. And this is some of um, you know I think th th this album and the way these musicians are performing is is what I really you know kind of uh, intended with my music. It's like I actually hear my music. And it's <laughs> such a pleasure and such an honor to work with everybody on the album and you guys. So thank you guys very much. So yeah. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> and maybe you guys can be a quartet sometime again. So I don't know. <laughs> but these guys sound awesome. So. All right. Um, and so now the next piece is Lost in the Caves. Um, and this piece goes a bit to my esoteric side and my quote unquote experimental side. Um, back in 2008 when I was experimenting with the different things. Uh, so you have a bass clarinet with electronics processing, which, you know, I just you put the clarinet sound through the computer and do some reverb and all that good stuff. Um, the title, Lost in the Caves, uh, comes from the idea of just being lost in the bars. It's because, like, caves, bars, watering holes, caverns, drinking too much, getting lost, and me like, okay, what am I doing? You know, I was like, where am I going? 
And then you're like, okay, well, you know, scream or, you know, get out of it. I don't know. Or you could just imagine yourself being lost in the caves. I mean, w in West Texas, there's Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico that was uh, pretty accessible to us. So we went and took some trips over there. Um, and so maybe that's a little bit of the inspiration uh, with that. So um, I just need to make sure that one of these mics are working and uh, then we can, you know, play, I guess. So let me go check this out one second. Seems like they're working. Well, so now I would like to introduce Thomas Piercy, who has been a longtime collaborator since 2008. Um, he messaged me randomly on MySpace because he wanted to, uh, you know, work with me. And so that was pretty awesome. And, you know, actually, you know, MySpace was something, right? So there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, for messaging me. And then we're still here. So there we go.
Okay, so there you go, that's Lost in the Caves. Um, to me, that also sounds like how I would be freaking out if I was lost in the caves. So, <laughs> the last, the screaming at the end is like, you just don't know what to do, right? So, at this moment, I thought it'd be kind of cool to have a little Q&A, and I would like to introduce the album sponsor who donated the most um, for the ending production cost and the album release concert here. Uh, and his name is Ali, he's a film producer, published author, and human rights activist associated with multiple LGBTQ organizations. He lends his voice to multiple nonprofit causes. His aim is to make sure that those who are growing up now with lots of doubts are reassured that it will get better. So I would like to bring up to the stage Ali. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much for coming in and spending your wonderful evening with us in this beautiful theater. Tonight we'll be, tonight we'll be uh, delighted with six out of the ten wonderful pieces that we have on the album. Uh, we just experienced uh, two of those and we have more to fill in uh, for the rest of this uh, evening. Uh, before we, uh, I open it up for and have a discussion, I just wanted to kick in and start with the small Q&A session and my own question for uh, the composer uh, over here. Uh, and I wanted to discuss about something that is actually not on tonight's program, and that is called Let's Begin. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of the, uh, the fast-paced as well as almost non-stop musical piece that is on the album. So my question is, like, what was your journey when you were actually composing it? Yeah, so that was right uh, sort of in the middle of the shutdown pandemic. It was the summer 2021. Um, I was associated, and I am still associated with the Gabriela Leonard Frank Academy of Music. And uh, the point, a lot of the, um, well, there's a few things with uh, GLF Camp is that they like to not only have just summer festival, they don't, not a summer festival exactly, you bring in composers and performers to work closely and collaborate, so that's where you have the cycles going on. And they also have this alumni network association, which because I went through a cycle, I'm now a part of the alumni. So during the pandemic, they also wanted to find out ways they can uh, help musicians who were struggling because of the loss of gigs. And so I wrote a solo violin piece, which is also on the album, um, didn't take a commission fee, so uh, and it's Hannah Christensen in Chicago that I wrote it for, who received a fee for that. And then, and then a few months afterwards, there were several ensembles where the um, uh, the Tesla Quartet was a, uh, doing a commissioning program, and they teamed up with GLF Cam, and I was asked to write a short quartet for them, and then I got a little commission fee at that point, and. So, of course, we're in 2021, the bizarreness of that summer, uh, to say the least, and all these pr protests and racial injustices that just do not go away. I mean, I think the 90s just did a really good job at sugarcoating everything. And, uh, and then we unleashed this monster that's still in our country of racism during the Obama presidency, and it just has not stopped since. And now we have Florida going all crazy right now and then other places. So that's just my political bent. But anyway, so, and <laughs> if anybody knows me, you know me. So, uh, so let's begin. All right, so let's begin again about dealing with racism. And that's where my idea, my understanding was coming from. Because I thought in the 90s and the early 2000s, I thought we were all good and like, okay, well, you know, everybody's getting along, but then we have Obama coming in and that's when everything, you know, people got up in arms. And now I've, I witnessed other people getting into the idea of dealing with racism. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's good, that's good. Now we have other people concerned about this and we have these protests in here. So let's just begin anew, you know, in, in a good spirit and camaraderie and trying to get it all together. So that's just what I was feeling. Um, now the actual musical material, I mean, it's yeah, energetic, it's, it's ongoing. Um, but also, uh, the uh, Tesla Quartet wanted the composers to use a theme from uh, one of the Beethoven uh, string quartets, which is in the program notes, and sorry, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> and so you'll, uh, you'll hear a little uh, vestiges of that in that quartet, so you've got to listen to the album for it. So, and yeah, so yeah, energetic, 
you know, let's get off our feet and do something about this scourge in our country. Thank you so much. Uh, since we all know about Gilbert, and uh, once he gets the mic, he speaks a lot. So I'll just transfer the question <laughs> a little bit over to uh, Kathy. Uh, so Kathy has been uh, playing a lot for uh, Gilbert. I actually had the opportunity to listen to the music uh, uh, in one of the concerts that happened at one of the places. So I had a question for you. So as a performer, uh, what it is? Uh, what is it that? inspires, like what is that one thing in a composition that inspires and motivates you the most to play it? Warning, I talk a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's see. Um, some sort of extreme, like extremeness in, in a composition and um, maybe specifically how it would apply to Gilbert is that I would I look for his extreme expressivity and emotion and directness, which has really appealed to me. I, I also uh, really admire the sort of changes that he's gone through and the variation in his work. Um, but, but back to what really attracts me about things is of some sort of extremity of emotion, of relentlessness, and it wouldn't necessarily have to be fast and loud but some sort of relentless persistence and pureness of feeling. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, with that, I am going to open it up to the audience. Do, uh, do we have any questions for the composer or the uh, performer? Anyone? And while you all think, let me actually put you on the spot one more time. Uh, there is uh, a, a one piece where it actually is uh, titled uh, uh, the the passions, uh, imagined passions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I w I wanted to pick your brain on saying what was that particular was there a particular passion that you were envisioning when you were composing it? Oh, stage, right? So. <laughs> Well, it's a piano trio, um, and some of my music can be really impassioned, and sometimes I can be a really passionate guy. So, um, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> okay, sometimes I'm calm too, I guess. I don't remember. Um, imagine, you know, so sometimes you're daydreaming about romance, I guess, or whatever, you know, and, or, you know, maybe the daydreams are so intense about something and you thought it actually happened. Or you have an unrequited love that you hope to have happened, but you don't know, so you're imagining it, right? So around that time, it was like 2011, 2010, yeah, yeah. So there were a few pieces about that theme, and the, the, another one was Secret Nights that Tom Piercy uh, performed on as well. So um, yeah, basically that's what it is. and. Um, yeah, and, and then one point about that is like I, I remember coming home around 5 a.m. after having too much whiskey, and I just was looking at the piece on the on the on the desk. And I'm like, what do I just like put a single note? Ding ding. Was it like a D or something? So just you know. And that's you know you'll hear that in the in the actual album. So you now you understand. It's like okay, that's when I come home from a little bit too much drinking and collecting myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Amazing. That's, that's the passion we are looking for. Uh, if somebody's raising their hand, I can't see it. So I'll just step down uh, in case. Yes. Uh, this is great to be here, Gilbert. Thanks for putting it together. <laughs> um, you know, we have Thomas Piercy here. We have Kathleen Sapove here. A number of other musicians that you've worked with over the years. And I'm curious how the relationships have have evolved when you're working with these performers you know what have you learned about yourself or maybe working with these uh, performers that you find now you're in either incorporating into your music or that you're taking into account as you continue to work with them in this relationship yeah like how's it developed i mean yeah with tom it was he was he was interested in my music from uh from the beginning and it's just pretty pretty cool and then we've been collaborating on on uh, pieces since then. Um, I remember with Kathleen Supervé, with, of course, Ryan, you and I uh, do NY Sound Circuit. Uh, we had her on, uh, uh, 
the NY Sound Circuit, and I think we had musicians, in the, I mean, people in the audience, like, write uh, color things on, on paper or whatever. And, uh, and then I was very colorful, and she's like, oh my God, you're so colorful with your things. And so I think I was still very inspired by Augusta Reed Thomas, which was my teacher's, and I'm still inspired by her. Um, and I, it, 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 she wrote, writes, uh, her, her planning, when she's planning works, it's very colorful, her graphs and everything. She actually, ha there's a website in the University of Chicago, a contemporary uh, classical composition department, all about the graphs, and they're all colorful and everything. She sells them, uh, I don't know, uh, for donors and stuff like that, too. So, anyway, I did that um, uh, for Kathy's improvisation, and I was like, just so, just color, color, and she's like, very in, like, intrigued by it, so. And then I think we kind of started a, you know, a friendship, a relationship from there, and then you know, uh, brought her in for Sound Circuit things, for other things, and then we started working on my music, and so, you know, just very happy, so, yeah. That's a great story. Uh, yes. Oh, thanks. I guess similar to the last question, uh, same, same, but different, is uh, what do you feel about composing for different instruments or hearing different instruments you know, express your compositions. Um, is there a favorite uh, or an unexpected instrument that you found uh, to be a muse? Well, um, you know, I, I have to admit that harp and guitar are less natural to me, but then I find a way to do it. So, I mean, I got a guitar when I was writing this piece, uh, Spunk, I think it was Spunk, I don't know. I, I bought a guitar randomly, just to make sure I get the chords right. And with harp, I'm just very careful with that. Um, but in, in general, you know, I embrace all instruments, and I'm, I just haven't been, I actually, yeah, that's a good idea, I mean, like, or then I'm thinking, it's like, I should really expand to non-Western instruments as well. Um, so, yeah. With that, I will use that as a cue to say, let's mingle, let's have some fun before we come back for the next slot. Yes. So, thank you, everyone. Have, have another drink, it's a party, so we'll have the next set here in a bit.
Well, thank you very much, Kathleen. Uh, yeah, so beautiful performance. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, I was writing, I, I was um, discerning life, religious life, in 2014 to 2016. Um, and I even went to a uh, Franciscan friary for the first year uh, to see if I wanted to become a Franciscan friar. And that is something that I never thought about, but I, that was always in me. Uh, not just exactly Franciscanism, but probably it is too. Um, but just my connection with uh, my faith and my religion um, since I was a child. Um, and I just had this strong, uh, you know, I, I thought of myself as a little ant on a leaf being carried in a stream to this place, you know. And I entered into the postulancy, left New York, went to Silver Spring, Maryland to see how it'd be. It was beautiful, it was wonderful. I loved it, it was great. But there were just things still lingering on my mind and uh, in the middle of it, I decided, that, well, I figured that there was a point of no return, that I could lose my apartment in New York, and I could lose this and have less connections with coming back if I wanted to come back, but there were lingering things in my mind that I hadn't done enough with my music, and that I'm probably gonna give romance another try. So those were the two choices. <laughs> uh, or continue on in this other happy life, you know. Um, and that's what it was. I mean, I was sitting in front of the Eucharist in, in the chapel with the piano, and I just played the first few notes, and that was the start of that piece, My Soul Waits. This is from a psalm, so. And um, so then, there you go, but I'm back, right? So here I am. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, and one of the goals that I had for myself by like, the time I was 40, now I'm 41, I would release an album. The other one was I had an opera. I guess that's too much to do at once, so it opera's next, I guess. I don't know. So we'll figure that out. But I wrote some A2s that I thought I could play for myself, and only for myself. No one asked me to write it. Um, dealing with compositional things, but not necessarily A2s as an exercise. But I can play one of them right now, and I will do that for the first time ever in New York City. And then I will improvise, so we'll see what happens.
you very much. Yeah, usually I do that in private, but now I'm, so there you go, now it's public. So. <laughs> All right, so we have one more piece, and it's a Whopper. Um, and uh, but we'll have a little bit more drinks because it is still a party. And uh, then we'll have Ictus Percussion and Kathleen Spivet come back on the stage. So in the meantime, uh, enjoy yourselves and we'll see you in a bit. All right, so now we're up to the last piece and this is only half of the album. Um, the etude and the improvisation is not on the album. I just wanted to put something in the concert uh, just so we could have more music, right? Um, so yeah, um, well, again, thank you guys very much for all being here. This is pretty amazing to see so many people from so many years and new and old and strange and, uh, you know, <laughs> it's all going to be good. So we're all family. We're all, you know, so go buy the album Bandcamp. Uh, or if you don't want to pay $10 or $5, I don't remember what it is, stream it, right? Put on a playlist and all that good stuff. Um, or, you know, if you want to sign up from a mailing list, it's all the information's here. Some of you guys are on the mailing list. Uh, some of you aren't, because I know that. And, uh, <laughs> and I know some of you are not followers of me on Instagram, so there's two Instagrams there. I'm also a DJ and a producer. That's my other part of my musical life. Um, so they're all there, too. So, But I would also like to thank the... Um, the, uh, the Terrestrial Journeys uh, uh, contributors. Not only that we had Ali, who is the album sponsor, but we had Barbara Birch, Armando Castellano, uh, my mother, Beatrice Galindo, Bill Hardin, who was, uh, was uh, my uh, band teacher from junior high to high school, uh, oh. Tammy Hasso, who is a friend of my mom's, uh, Stephanie Marin, which is a, uh, I went to school with her. She played clarinet in high school. Ryan McGavin, a uh, longtime friend and composer trumpet player, but doesn't do that right now. Uh, he will eventually, I guess. Uh, my grandmother, Virginia Natividad. Sean Shepard, a, a cherished composer friend of mine. Mark Siegman, another good friend of mine. William Verdone, uh, a good friend of mine. Um, Amori Vigna. And Francis White, a uh, composer friend of mine. So let's thank them as well. And, uh, you know, because really, without their contributions, I wouldn't be able to pay the musicians. I'd be paying them my rent money. So, <laughs> and that's not a lie. So anyway, so I also have upcoming classical events with Random Access Music, with whom I've been long associated, uh, composer, performer, collective. And we have one of the founders here, David Featheroff, somewhere. Um, um, and uh, we also have Tom Piercy, who is now the artistic director of, um, of uh, Random Access Music. So I will have my piano trio uh, currents, a new piano trio, not the one on the album, uh, have its New York premiere on April 1st, and then gonna have Relevant Tones, a new string quartet, a uh, short one again, um, uh, in April, and then Sound of Silent Film Music Festival with you know live music performed with a film screening, which comes out of Chicago from Access Contemporary Music, so now they're bringing that here. So that's a pretty cool idea. You have a screening of movies or short films with live music. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Ali, do you want to say anything, uh, final remarks, anything like that? Um, I don't know where you are, but there you are. I was way in the back, but uh, once again, uh, thank you again for coming in and showing your support to both us, to the composers, and for the music. And we love to have you all in our future events. And once again, uh, please remember us, uh, uh, get into the newsletter so that you can hear more and more about what's happening and what's upcoming. And I hope you enjoy the final and the wonderful finale that we have for you now. So. With that, yes, take it. very good. So now we'll have Ictus Percussion, Chris Graham, Sean Statzer, and Kathleen Sibovi.
one more time for the composer as well as the composer. Thank you very much, and yes, it's, it's very nice to perform live in the audience and on the album and everywhere. So um, yeah, so there we go. Thank you for coming, and um, it was such a pleasure having you all here. And I'm serious, like you know, people from all walks of my life are here, and that's pretty amazing. So um, we are going to have some kind of after gathering. I'm not sure where you had to talk to Ali or Marcel, or let's Ali wants to say it here. But uh, once we wrap up over here, please come over to the Attic Cafe. That's just one block away from here. Uh, and we can just uh, walk in there and have some eat, drink, and sit down and chat over. So once again, thank you, everyone, for coming in and for the whole piece. So. I'll see you guys next time. Whenever that